back to Amanda's favorites. Today we have a Panda Planner Weekly to review that I was sent from Panda Planner. I have reviewed Panda Planner daily and this um, video I will link below. So this is Panda Planner daily and I've actually had a lot of interest in the Panda Planner daily. It is on Amazon and so check that video out. I will link it below in the description if you're interested in that. They have now sent me a Panda Planner Weekly, which is undated, just like the daily. So the daily I reviewed was an undated. This is an undated weekly, but they sent me in the bigger size, eight and a half by 11. So let's get into this and look at this. This is also a soft cover, whereas the daily I did was a hard cover. So let's get in and talk about the Panda Planner. This is a 12 month weekly planner Panda Planner says it is for productivity, time management, and happiness. And they have a little Albert Einstein quote here. Everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. Okay, so let's get into this book right here. I know the Panda Planner daily comes in different colors. And so I will check and write that in here if um, the big weekly comes in different colors. I'm not sure. So this is big and the cover is soft. It is a softer cover than Passion Planner. Um, it feels very durable, but it is softer. So if you want something you know, hard to write on, then you're gonna want um, a hard cover because this, you know, when you're out and about, this bow size lends itself to being good for a desk, I think. Um, it's not as portable as a small size, but someone who needs more room and needs more room to schedule appointments for every day, this would be ideal to go on a desk. So let's talk about this Panda Planner. It has 100 GSM paper, so very good paper in it. Um, it has a pocket in the back, like an accordion expandable pocket right here and that expands with like black material on the side. It looks really durable, like it's gonna hold up well. It comes with a black band to match the planner and that seems durable also. The back, all you have is just Panda Planner on there and that's it. So it's very plain if you need it for an office. It can look very professional. It comes with three ribbons, which I think is really nice um, in this type of planner. So first you start off, they give you a page, which is how to use this planner. And I really like when planner companies do this. I've said this in other videos because they really have an insight into how they designed this planner. And sometimes they point out things that I didn't even think of like different ways to use it. And I may not choose to use it the way that they're suggesting, but it's nice to read it nonetheless and get their take on the planner that they designed. So I really do like to read those notes from the creator of the planner. Panda Planner Monthly. So first you start with your monthly views. This is a 12 month planner, but it is undated. So you can start it any month you want. And you guys know if you follow me, I've talked about all the good things about an undated planner is that you, know, you can start and stop it whenever you want. You can skip weeks when you're on vacation and you know, you're not wasting a week. You can double up on weeks since you're the one numbering it. Like if you want a whole week for work and then renumber, you know, a week for fitness or for home, you can do that. Now in this planner though, you will be skipping a month, uh, a review. I'm going to show you that there's a review of after every week. And so if you did double up on weeks, like make a week for work and then renumber the exact same week for food and fitness or for home, something like that, then you would have a weekly review that you may not want to fill out twice. So that would be a page, you know, lost or wasted. But I don't really see that as a waste if that's the best way for you to use it, how you want to utilize it. Okay. So first of all, you have all 12 months up front because in an undated planner, of course, they don't know which months are going to have four weeks or five weeks. So you can't have your months interspersed with your weeks. So all 12 months are up front back to back, which in a planner without tabs, a bound planner like this, I always say is a good thing in my mind 
because for advanced planning, it's easy for me to flip through every month. The months are just back to back with no pages in between. And so you can easily label your month like if you started in, you know, March or April and go from there. And it's just, it's easy to find your monthlies. You're not searching for them without tabs. Okay, so for each month, you have room to write what month it is. They gave you little gray circles to write the date in. And then this little gray H is for a habit you're keeping track of. You're going to track a habit a month in here with kind of your goals and your focus for this planner. And that is to check off if you did your habit that you're tracking that month. So up here you would write your focus for the month and here you would write your habit for the month that you're working on and that's how you would track it is the H on every day. Then let's go down here. Plan this month's goals. So you're going to have three goals to write out. You're going to have your reasons why. You're going to have distractions to avoid. So your why for the goal. And this is your plan side. This is your review side. This month's wins, insights gained, and how I'll improve. So this is what you do at the end of the month. And this is what you do planning ahead for the month right here. Here is your notes tracker. Okay, like I said, this is 100 GSM paper. It feels very thick. It feels great. Um, so I don't think you're going to have any problems with this paper. But let's do a pen test and show you. With just a few pens I have right here. This is a Pilot G205. And this is just a Ballpoint Paper Mate Ink Joy. And you guys know I kind of have a heavy hand when I write with pens. So let's see. You cannot see that pen through there where I wrote. It does not ghost. It, it's great paper. So really good quality paper. I'm happy with the paper. Okay, so your monthly view is pretty simple then. You have your plan, your month, your goals, your focus, and your habit. You have your review of your month right down there. And like I said, you have all your 12 months up front. Then we are going to start our weeklies. So, and this is where the three uh, ribbons are going to come into play being really helpful. Okay, so there you kind of have a cover page panda planner. Journaling, reflection, creativity on this dot grid page. It's open to you what you want to use it for. Day and date. So this is your review and planning your upcoming week. Now we don't have a week before this, so you would not fill out your review right here. Um, but let's go through it anyway. And then this is planning your upcoming week. So after every week, you have this page following it. You have a review of last week. And you have, you can write your dates. You have big wins. What are your big wins from the week? One, two, three, four, five. I like that to sit down at the end of the week. If I am prompted to think of what are my big wins? My big wins may not be so big. They may just be that I got to the grocery store. I cleaned the bathroom. We had a good week in homeschool. You know, my son had his UIL violin concert. Those are like my kind of wins. Other people will have completely different wins. How I'll improve next week. I can definitely think of two things to improve on each week um, to focus on. Then um, you think about your upcoming week after you've reviewed the last week. Things I will do to make this week great. Personal, work, family slash friends, and relationship in those four categories. Three things you're looking forward to. Two habits you're focusing on developing. And learn something new. Is there something you want to work on learning? And a passion project. Are you working on a passion project that you, you know, are excited about? Okay, so here are four projects for the upcoming week. Or maybe four things that need to get done. Top goals. Right there. One, two, three, four, five. So, like I said, even though they suggest in, in their beginning page, they tell you their suggestions on how to use this planner. And... I always like to read that. Like I said, I take these type of pages and make them my own. However, they're going to work best for me. Okay, so I may not necessarily be working on a passion project at the time. You know, I may morph that into my painting project at the time. Or I, I'm just giving an example. So there's definitely a way you can make this page work for you and make it your own. Even if you're not wanting to do their exact, you know, categories. 
Okay, here is your Panda Planner weekly spread. It's a Sunday start, just like their monthly calendar was. I didn't point that out, I'm sorry. It's a Sunday start, and their weekly is a Sunday start also. All right, you start out every day, I am grateful for, with three things you're grateful for. So you're supposed to wake up thinking that and, and do that right off. Two things you're excited about, three priorities for the day, I definitely like that. And then your schedule for the day from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Then today's top three wins and how I'll improve. So you're kind of going to fill this out at the end of the day. And you're going to fill this out at the beginning of the day, of course. All right. You have room to write your dates in every day. And you have room for your habit to check it off, check it off every day. So whether you want to transfer that to your monthly habit check off, that's up to you. If you only want to keep track of a weekly or a monthly, um, I think that's just kind of whatever works best for you. If you want to keep track of both of them and don't see it as, you know, redundant because I would probably check it off on both because I like to see a monthly view overall how I'm doing on a habit. But it is also nice to see every day as you go along in the week, like, oh, okay, I only missed one day this week, you know? Okay, so the daily habit you're working on, your weekly focus, your two challenges for that week, and weekly task list with tick boxes, a note section that's blank, room to write the week of right here. And so every day is the same. Then at the end of every week, you get this. You get a big journaling reflection creativity page. I love that there is this big notes page at the end of every week because it could also be for your weekly to-do list. And it's just right there, like starting out your next week. To me, you know, that can also be what it's used for. That's probably what I would use it for, to be honest. Um, I would, that would probably become my weekly to-do list page so I can refer back during the week. So I like having that page there. I think it is really helpful to review your last week and think about up planning your upcoming week, not just jumping into a week, but you think about what happened last week, what got done, what didn't get done, how well did you work on your habits, your goals, your passion projects, whatever your Whatever your focus and habits were that week, how well did you do? And then think about for the upcoming week, okay, well, how can I change that then? What can I do to make that better this week? And then your top five goals for the week. I really like this page in between your weeks. I feel like if you are someone who wants to focus on your goals and, you know, think about reflecting each week and then think about how you're going to you know, change those goals a little bit after reflecting. I just think this is a really helpful page, personally. And I think it's really nice to have it in between every week. I can't think of another planner, like, right offhand that has a weekly spread like this, and then a whole blank page, and then your review of last week, planning your upcoming week, and then going right into the week. So, to me, this is unique from what I have reviewed before in weekly planners like this and like a bound weekly goal planner. So this setup is unique. You have your week, then you have your blank journaling, reflection, creativity, or list page. You have your review of last week, you're planning your upcoming week, your projects, your top goals, and then you have your next week. So it's just going to go all the way through the year like this. And then you're going to end your year, your 12 months, like I said, it's undated, so whenever you end, you're going to end your 12 months, you have a couple of just dot grid note pages here, all right, like four, and then it says designed with love in Boston, printed with care in China, and that's the end. It feels like a really quality planner to me. Um, the paper is really quality. The ribbons, having three of them, I think are really helpful. You're going to have one on your monthly, of course, and you're going to have one on the week that you're on. Um, but I can always use another ribbon. I think it's helpful. You can have one back in your notes pages or if there's a certain week or month you want to look back on. So I think it's really nice you get three ribbons. And I, like I said, I think this is a really unique setup because it's not one that I personally have reviewed before with the week and then following 
you get your journal reflection creativity and then your review of last week and your planning upcoming week. So if you're looking for something like this, definitely check it out on Amazon. And like I said, I will link the daily Panda Planner video down below in my description box. And if you have used Panda Planner, the weekly or the daily, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. And I would love to know what you've loved about it and um, how it has worked out for you. Okay, guys, thanks for watching this review of Panda Planner Weekly. And happy planning until next time. Bye-bye.